Hello everyone and welcome to this video guideline on the course blog. So for this assignment it's worth 15% of your grade and it composed of having of posting 10 blog posts to the course blog and that includes your um, that's in addition to your introductory post. Uh, it includes five comments to different students in different weeks and it'll be due weekly starting with um, module two. So just an overview, this, the purpose of this is to further encourage discussion and interaction around the course material as well as think about new forms of writing. Uh, this, cor this course will utilize a blog and that the blog address there is the one that we'll be using. And just note that that blog is only open to authors. So this is going to mean that only people in this course will be able to see this blog. It will not be open to um, the world at large and it's only if we as a group decide to do so. Um, would we allow that? Also note that while there are 10 posts, um, that means you do not have to do a post every week. There's some wiggle room because you're only blogging between, uh, I believe, modules 2 and 14. So you do have, you know, there are a couple weeks where you can choose which weeks you don't post. Um, those might, you might trade off or try to do the, those are the weeks that you comment or you just, just be aware that you won't have to post every week within the course. So what to blog? Uh, as I said, there'll be 10 posts. Each post should be at least 150 words or more. And the focus should be the student's own understanding, appreciation, or disdain even uh, for particular work from that week's readings in conjunction with the questions and considerations from the reading selection guide. Uh, the reading selection guide is on Angel and really what you're doing here is not necessarily tying it to the weekly lecture but you're tying it to the categories um, into the, those larger units right the first person biographies first person narratives and autobiographies poetry fiction um, essay tracks etc you're really tying your thoughts and considerations of the work to the questions there, but largely, you know, giving your own understanding and appreciation of a given work. Um, in doing so, you should be trying to write about one of the works that hasn't been discussed in class or in the course lecture. Um, right? You should be aiming to write about something you haven't discussed or, or hasn't been presented to you thus far. That can get a little tricky. Um, it isn't always going to work every week, but that's the goal, that's the expectation. Especially if I see, you know, that you've read five works and only one of which has been talked about that week, you really should be looking at the other four. Uh, and in doing so, you know, if, if it's impossible to do so, there are weeks where there's only two or three works being offered up. Um, in that case, what I what I would like you to see, what I'd like to see students do is to write about the work in a way that hasn't been addressed as of yet. So provide your own unique take, interpretation, thoughts about the work. Ultimately, with this assignment, the goal is to connect the the reading to the larger picture we're crafting of American literature. So there's also dialogue, right? This is what makes a blog a blog, is that there is there is response and comments to others. So the expectation is that you provide five comments on five different people's posts in five different weeks. What this means is you can't wait until the end of the semester, the last week of the course, to get in your dialogue. You do actually have to reply to different people. Also, as the person who has posted, and has somebody replying to, the expectation is that you reply to them. So if somebody comments specifically on your post, you should be replying to that person, especially if they ask questions, you should be answering them. If not, you should be at least acknowledging that they've written and responded to you. Um, this is the, the dialogue, the, this is the, the interactive nature of blogs. So the content of the comments um, can include commentary, questions, or further elaborations of the blogger's point. Keep in mind that this is dialogue. What that means is that if somebody responds to you, as I said, um, to your post with comments or questions, it's expected that you respond to them accordingly by either answering their questions or acknowledging their thoughts. So we have in this course blogging and we have discussions. And 
there is uh, there's a lot of overlap between the two. The discussion is purely for people who are doing the course online, uh, whereas the blogging is for everybody in the course. And so that's one major distinction that I want to make here is that you know the stu students are going to be interacting with everybody in the course via the blog, whereas the discussion is really for those students just going online. But um, so the discussion's pur purpose of the discussion um, is for students online, and it's really an opportunity for those students to discuss the instructor's content for the module, such as the learning guide and mini lectures, and to connect it directly to the readings they have read um, that week, as well as dialogue with other students doing the online work that week about what they have observed, learned, or can make sense of. So the discussion is really creating a communal interaction for people doing the online course, and as I said, the blog is for is for each individual student to select a specific work that they read that week and to try to connect it to the larger course themes and ideas. Here the student wants to think about the reading as it relates to the particular unit um, and the particular time and write about what insights he or she has gleaned from the process. Uh, and, and to be clear, with particularly with the blog, this is going to be hard early on, but most likely with each module the student will get the hang of it and should be able to progress. So later in the semester, I indicate in the syllabus, students have the opportunity to add voice or video to your blog post. That is, rather than just writing a response, you can actually do a mini podcast or a video to offer up your blog response. So one thing to keep in mind with that is in doing so, you're going to have to embed the podcast or the video into your blog post. That is, you shouldn't be putting in a link for students to go somewhere else. They should be able to see it within the blog. So there is some technical know-how around that, and you might be familiar with it, you might not. Um, many places allow for you to, if you create, for instance, if you created your video and posted it on YouTube, you could then take that and embed it in a blog post um, on our blog. In fact, YouTube makes it really easy for you to do that. So just be aware that, you know, I really encourage students to do this. This can be fun, this can be creative, but you will need to make sure that the content is on the blog itself and not somewhere else. Keep in mind that whether you're doing uh, a podcast or you're doing a video, uh, the intellectual rigor should still be there. You should also have clarity of sound in delivery. That is, it does not have to be a, a perfect performance by any means. If you've noticed in my videos, I have lots of stumbling. I, I don't expect perfection. However, the intellectual capacity of, of, or the intellectual content should be there. And we should be able to hear you. And we should be, you know, the delivery should be, I would say, conversational or it can be, you know, a, a clear, direct read. You might write up what you're going to to say and just read that, but we want to make sure we can hear you clearly and that uh, the video is is of reasonable quality. Uh, I have provided a variety of tutorials on how to do this with different technologies. Uh, those can be found in the folder Video Tutorials, Course Tools, and um, in the Course Materials folder in Angel. And Again, I recommend that students write out some notes or script to help them prepare for uh, doing a recording, whether that's a uh, video recording or a sound recording. All right, so every blog post needs to have several things. First, it needs a title, and that title should consist of the type of writing, followed by a colon, followed by the title, followed with the, the term, with by the author's name. So, for instance, I have two examples here. You know, if you're doing Edgar Allan Poe's Telltale Heart, you should have the type of writing, short story or fiction, um, A Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe, or Speech, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God by Jonathan Edwards. That's the format. Students really need to stick to that. It helps make the blog consistent and clear um, for everybody to see and navigate through. Tags. Um, tags are, are descriptive category markers for your blog. Uh, for instance, if we we're using the Edgar Allan Poe post above, we would want to, uh, well, 
we would want to find we would want to include in our tags the author, the genre, the publication date if we know it, the title, and other key descriptors to categorize the post. Um, each tag is distinguished by a comma, and I'll show you quickly on the blog itself where this shows up. But um, you'll see regularly that this this is a key piece um, for the blog so that our post can be properly organized, and I'll look at that in a moment. Also, your 150 word explanation. Um, the writing should address a particular reading, how it connects to the course um, that the student or instructor hasn't substantially discussed yet. If you're doing video or if you're looking at doing video or um, sound, that 150 word explanation, you're looking at probably uh, probably about a two minutes. Um, is probably is uh, up to two minutes is a good way to think about it. Um, you'd want a two-minute video or a two-minute podcast, kind of summarizing your points and your thoughts on a particular reading. And you should clearly identify references to any external material. Um, if you use images, which are okay. Um, images need to be clearly identified where they come from. You also should be using um, public domain images, right? You should not be using material that you do not legally have the right to use. I would recommend using uh, the website search.creativecommons.com to find images that you can appropriately use in this blog. So what else can the blog include? Blog post include um, links to other sources that reinforce but don't merely repeat what the blogger is saying. Embedded images that are relevant to the author's point. Again, keeping in mind that you need to legally be able to use those images. Um, links to videos or embedded videos, again, that are relevant to the author's point. Um, so these are things that you can include to further enhance and make your post a little bit more snazzy. All right, so very briefly, um, when you're in Blogger and you're composing a blog post, um, this is what your screen's going to look at like. You're going to have post, and this is where you would put the title. Um, this area here is where you would construct the blog itself, and you would you know, write whatever it is you're going to write. You can adjust the fonts, although I would recommend not doing that too much because we want a certain amount of consistency. Over here, where it says Labels, you'll want to click on that, and this is where you put your tags. So in this case, um, the tags that I'm doing for this particular, uh, this particular post include 1843, which is the year the Telltale Heart came out, Edgar Allan Poe, who's the author, fiction, horror, short stories. So these are, these are different descriptors that I would use to better emphasize or better categorize the information. And then I would hit the Done button, and it would show up on the website. And when it shows up on the website, what you're going to see is, of course, the title. So notice this is a different one. This is a letter to Columbus. Um, it's going to, you know, we have the type of writing, the title of the writing, the author. And then over on the right, under Topics, that's what that term label is referring to. These are the different tags that we're dealing with. So, you know, we can see Christopher Columbus has become a tag, 1493, which is when this was written, um, communication, uh, Native Americans, because he makes reference to Native Americans. So that's how it lays out on the blog itself. And so that's why it's useful to make sure you're using the tags, the proper titles, all of those things to hopefully make it clear for all of us to move through this and, and get the, the key pieces of information. All right, that's all about blogs um, for this course and how you use them. Uh, there is um, some really good material in that course materials folder on how to use Blogger and all of that in case you need some additional help. And if you have further questions, by all means, let me know. Thank you very much.